Tom Hanks, Halle Berry, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Queen Latifah, Josh Lafazan. <laughs> what is the common denominator that binds this list of eminent individuals? Yes, if you were thinking that this is a list of both successful and attractive human beings, then you would be 100% entirely correct. <laughs> no, this is actually a list of celebrities who at one point in their careers attended a community college. I'm here to speak to you today about why all students, regardless of your GPA, socioeconomic status, academic interests, or career goals, should consider community college as the starting point for your collegiate journeys. Now, Shadyside Academy is a premier private school in the Pittsburgh area, so I'm sure you all haven't heard a great deal about community college. When it comes to community college, there seems to be either an omission of information on behalf of elite schools, or students are ingrained from a young age with the adage that if you don't work hard, you'll wind up in a community college. <laughs> I make this inference because I went to Syosset High School, a perennially ranked top 200 public school district. And I certainly didn't know a whole lot about what community college was when I roamed the halls there. But then again, the only things my friends and I really did know were how to get an extension on a paper and the operating hours of the local Taco Bell. Boy, have I come a long way since age 17. A long, long way since age 17. But what I had heard was that students would tell their friends as a joke that they'd wind up flunking out of school and have to enroll at NKK or Nassau Community College because the students there couldn't spell. So let's start with the basics, everybody. What is a community college? Community colleges, often colloquially referred to as junior colleges, are defined as two-year schools that provide affordable post-secondary education as a pathway to a four-year degree. Essentially, students enroll with the intention of parlaying their two-year degree or associate's degree into a four-year degree or bachelor's degree. Now, of course, community colleges aren't just for recent high school grads. They are filled with enrollments of people from teachers who aim to accrue a certain credential, to workers who aim to retrain in a new skill, to older students going back to school, and a myriad of other examples. But I preach the importance of community college today because of its value for graduating high school seniors. And I practiced what I preach because I enrolled right into community college when I graduated from Syosset High School in 2012. I cannot overstate what I am about to say. This was not an easy decision for me. In fact, it was one of the most difficult choices that I've made to date. Now, this is a corollary that I use for life. Whenever we take an alternative route in life or do something differently, other people just cannot handle it. Whenever we choose a courageous path to take a road less traveled, we subject ourselves to what seems like unrelenting criticism and ridicule. This is precisely what happened to me. I was told that I was throwing my life away, that I was, and I quote, pursuing the worst life plan ever. <laughs> my favorite anecdote? Seeing my father in the supermarket, a mom whose daughter was headed off to a four-year private school, said to my dad with a hushed voice and in all sincerity, my condolences. <laughs> my condolences. <laughs> was as if she was writing my eulogy. I mean, I'm still alive and kicking here, lady. Jeez. But... As much levity as I can bring to my recollection of this time period, it was not easy for me. In fact, I was brought down so often and with such fervor by my friends and other community members that I told my parents I had made a mistake and I wanted to disenroll from community college. Luckily, my parents reminded me of the value in taking a unique path and I was able to weather this storm of admonishment. But I know that not everybody has the same support system that I have. And I know that sometimes it's a lot easier to hear things 
from someone who isn't named mom or dad. My friends, that's why I'm giving this talk today. Here's my story. I was a student like many of you in the audience today. I had a very high GPA, had an accomplished career on the varsity debate team, was a member of more clubs than I could count, and was in the midst of an election to my town's school board of education, an election I went on to win, making me New York's youngest elected official. I pause here to say this. It doesn't matter who you are. Nobody is too good for community college. So the crux of my decision to enroll into community college was to assuage potential voters that I would be local for at least two years, thus allowing me to dedicate my full attention to serving on the school board. But there were countless other advantages to enrolling into community college. I was interested in a host of topics, and I wanted to explore different subject areas. And while most colleges make you declare a major before you enter as a freshman, I was able to take a liberal arts track. I studied at the Guggenheim and the Met for art history with Professor Guest, visited the Vanderbilt Planetarium for astronomy with Professor Bruckner, and studied the art of debate with Professor Webb. I observed rocks and soil with Professor Thyssen, and evaluated the effects of globalization with Professor Ramharak. I was also able to transfer all of my AP and college credits, thus allowing me to graduate a full semester early. And by the time I graduated, I was able to transfer into Cornell University at the ILR school, where I gained admission after completing community college with a 4.0 GPA. You guys think I'm an anomaly? Just ask my friends Anthony Conti from Rhode Island Community College, Marcus Hill from Dutchess Community College, Jake Mizells from Rockland Community College, or Logan Kenny, who graduated a year prior to me at Nassau Community College, all of whom took the same path that I did and wound up at Cornell University. Don't believe me still? Ask my friend Ryan Liu, who, after graduating from Pasadena City College, transferred to Yale University. Flash forward to present day, where I am currently a student at Harvard's Graduate School of Education, just six weeks away from my master's degree. The kicker, I did this all while saving over $100,000 over my first two years of school. And for a host of reasons, community college is also a great choice for you. Financially, community college is a home run. The average cost per year at a private college in 2016 was $33,480. The average cost for community college? $3,347. Going to community college allowed me to earn three degrees with less debt than most walk away with from one. Personally, community college is a home run. As you will have a flexible class schedule as a commuter student, you will have ample time to get a job during the week thus earning disposable income while also learning how to navigate the workplace. But most importantly, community college makes you a better citizen. Never will you be in a more diverse environment when it comes to thought, race, age, and intellectual ability. Going to community college allowed me to become more understanding of those who came from different places than I did. And I am a better man today because of my time at community college. And for the record, I acknowledge my personal privilege in giving this talk because for almost half the country, community college is the norm. In the 2013-2014 school year, 46%, yes, you heard that correctly, 46% of students completing a four-year degree attended a two-year institution at some point in the previous 10 years. And 1,167 community colleges in the United States enroll more than 12.4 million students. That's more than the entire population of Belgium. <laughs> you now have all the information and statistics available at your fingertips. You've heard my story and have seen how community college prepared me 
to earn not one, but two Ivy League degrees. I've laid out the arguments for why community college is the right choice for you. Anais Nin once said that life shrinks or expands in proportion to one's courage. All that's standing in your way is courage. The courage to be different. The courage to do what's best for you and not what satisfies the opinions of others. The courage to take a road less traveled. You know, every morning since I was a kid, my mom would give me the same piece of advice. You can hear it in my head now. Joshua Alexander Lafazan, stay in your own lane. Stay in your own lane. This guidance has been inculcated in me because I have come to understand that in life, it's not about where you start. What matters, what truly, truly matters, is where you finish. So when you're at Cornell, or at Harvard, or at West Point, or Annapolis, or wherever life takes you, you will look back with pride at your decision to enroll in community college. And, ladies and gentlemen, at that point, with your cap and gown on, your diploma in hand, and an eye towards the future, I promise you that the only person laughing will be you. Thank you, everybody.